Welcome to the automation track of the 6.5 Summit. I'm Fred McClymans of Futurum Research, and on behalf of our team and the team at More Insights and Strategy, thanks for joining us. In this fireside chat, my colleague Shelley Kramer is joined by John Gilman, the founder and CEO of Clear Software. John believes that simplified business software and intelligent automation can help organizations streamline core processes in the cloud and on-prem and improve employee productivity. With that, let's get to this chat and the question, what's next in the world of software-defined automation? And I'll tell you now, it may not always be RPA. John Gilman is the CEO of Clear Software. And I think one of the reasons we both get along so well is that we're kind of geeky and we like solving problems. So there are worse friends to have. John started his career as a software developer at Accenture, implementing SAP at some of the world's largest companies. And what he found himself doing on the regular is creating productivity tools for his customers in SAP and Excel spreadsheets, which is everybody's favorite thing. In 2012, John founded Clear Software after he created what's called a configurable product that accomplished basically the same productivity goals as his custom software development was doing. And what we're, John and I are going to talk about today is software-defined automation and how more robot, robotic process automation, RPA, is actually not the goal. John, welcome. It's great to have you here. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. So tell us a little bit about RPA. I know that RPA has kind of taken the enterprise by storm for really the course of the last couple of years. Talk to us a little bit about maybe the state of RPA and what you're seeing out there. I think RPA uh, was a great gateway for people to get into automation. Uh, It does a great job automating rote tasks that you might be doing in the background, like reconciling a bank statement or applying cash against receivables. Um, really things that humans shouldn't be doing in the first place. Uh, but what's, where it's really struggled is uh, extending itself to large end-to-end business processes where you may have five or 10,000 business users executing that process on a daily basis. Um, and that's really where intelligent process automation comes in. It tries to um, marry the concepts of business process management with um, things like AI and ML and RPA in a large tool set that allows people to automate large scale business processes. So it kind of picks up where RPA left off and extends it to uh, your entire workforce. Yeah, and there's just so much that can be done beyond you know the solutions that RPA delivers. And I think thinking thinking big and thinking beyond that is really part of what this conversation is all about. I do want to add a research note here. Our team at Futurum did a study for Clear Software that we published in November of 2019, and that was called How Intelligent Process Automation Can Change Everything About Your Business Journey. And that research report touches a lot on our conversation today. So I encourage you, we'll post a link to that here in our show notes, but I encourage you to check that out because if you're interested in our conversation, you're going to be interested in that report. So John, tell us a little bit about Clear Software. Sure, yeah. So Clear is an automation platform that's focused on making people faster at their jobs. And we really accomplish that through two separate products. So Clear Work is our business process management layer, runs in the cloud. Uh, It's a no-code platform that allows you to take data and functionality from many different systems and streamline it into one single pane of glass so that you can run your business process the way you want to run it. Um, And then we have Clear Process, which is our integration hub that connects all of these systems. So, you know, the likes of an SAP or an Oracle or a Salesforce um, that allows us to bring them all together and then expose it to Clear Work, our business process management layer, in a nice seamless uh, format. You know, it sounds like making complex processes simple is really a lot about what this solution and i don't think that's a marketing tagline of yours or anything but i'm just listening to your explanation and i think you know sometimes having to go here for this and there for that and you know it's exhausting and frustrating and so it sounds a lot like making what can often be complex processes simple is part of what your software solution delivers is that right absolutely and it's what i've spent my entire career doing is is taking a a process that may span you know five different systems and 30 different screens and putting it into one simple web page so that people can get their jobs done uh, more quickly and so they don't honestly dread coming to work well i'm all for that so software defined automation 
talk to us about what exactly that means. I think it's important to call out what we do in the intelligent automation space as software defined automation, uh, because there actually is robotic automation that's been around for many decades. So if you go to an assembly plant at General Motors or Toyota or Honda, you're gonna see robots welding pieces of metal together, lifting up chassis uh, and moving things around on the assembly line. That is robotic automation and it's been around uh, for, for quite a long time. Um, so when people say robotic process automation, that can be confusing to an outsider because they'll say, well, you know, I've, I've heard of these welding robots at, at Toyota. Is that the same thing? And it's, it's really not. Um, we're talking about taking software defined processes and applying automation on top of those, uh, which is obviously very different from a robotic arm welding uh, two pieces of sheet metal together. Right, absolutely. And I think that, you know, people get kind of hung up on automation because they're thinking about, you know, the different use cases. And I think that, you know, one example that's particularly timely is um, of, of how RPA can help is, for instance, when we had um, banks and financial services institutions just bombarded with loan applications that they had to process in a very rapid in very rapid amount of time. And so you can use RPA in some of those repeatable processes that humans normally go to through to help shorten that process. Now, what we're talking about when we talk about some of what clear software can develop, it's completely different than just those mundane, repeatable tasks. It really is factoring in AI into the equation and intelligent automation, which kind of is a game changer. So maybe speak to us a little bit about that and how integrating that into the process makes such a difference. Absolutely. So, um, you know, like I alluded to, RPA is great at, at, some, at automating things that are very repeatable, um, that don't require a lot of decision points. But anytime you start to involve humans into the process, making contextual decisions, um, that's really where intelligent process automation thrives. So uh, I'd like to say that organizations need to figure out how to comb their hair and tie their shoes the same way repeatably. Um, so, you know, there, there's a huge part of, of IPA that is uh, business process reengineering where you need to bring in your, you know, your favorite professional services firm to help you uh, redefine the way you execute a business process consistently across all of your locations, um, you know, even, even across different uh, job functions and different departments so that you can then apply automation on top of that newly defined consistent business process. And then over time, you can start to use machine learning uh, to extract uh, data out of those processes and eventually apply uh, prescriptive actions on top of those, uh, you know, on top of that ML. So um, I think a lot of organizations are quite a long way from using AI on top of their business processes because they need to figure out a way to operate consistently first before they can take advantage of some of these intelligent automation uh, technologies. You know, I think that the what this brings to mind is that, you know, your digital transformation journey starts and it never ends. And I think that the same is true of your automation journey. And that I think that part of how you start, um, especially now, I think that what we're seeing businesses do is really trying to think about rethinking and kind of, you know, everything is already sort of blown up, right? Our processes, everything's different. So this is a really good time to rethink and refocus and kind of re-engineer the way that we do things and figure out, you know, how we can slide automation into this and what that process looks like. And then I think that, you know, what we've seen is that once you start going down that path as an organization, then you start to realize the different use cases that are available and, oh, we can do this with RPA. But, you know, now that we've gotten this far down the road, we can slide intelligent automation into here that's going to change how even more how these processes work. So I think that that's probably an important part, important reminder for people in this conversation that your automation journey is not really one that ends, you know, if, if you're doing it right, I think it should always be evolving and looking at more and more business processes and how you can use this technology to continue to streamline your processes and, you know, do all kinds of things as it relates to efficiencies and, you know, making people's jobs happier and all that sort of thing. Wouldn't you agree that it's really kind of a never ending process? 
Yeah, process improvement in general is never ending. Um, otherwise, we we wouldn't innovate, we wouldn't create new things as a species. So um, you're never done. You can always make a process better. Um, you, you can always strive to automate as much of it as possible. So you know, if you start off uh, automating, you know, 60% of a business process through RPA or or through other intelligent automation technologies, um, then there's still room for improvement. Why not get it to 70? Why not get it to 80 or 90% automated? So. Um, you know, it's just like all innovation. It can always get better. Yeah, I think that our, in many instances, our brains are wired for here's my task list and what can I check off of it? And so, you know, one of the things that I always try to talk about is the fact that, you know, continuous improvement and tweaking and I mean, everything about that refinement and examination of processes is really something that we all should be doing on the regular. And I think really that's sometimes hard for businesses to grasp. Um, I would love to know, can you give some case study examples, a couple, a couple of customer use cases, and maybe even, you know, touch on how intelligent automation can create, uh, that can help create value maybe in ways that RPA can't? Yeah, absolutely. So I think, um, you know, one of the spectrum where we come in is is mainly on the human based automation side. So um, our business process management layer is really where we started. So we were always focused on um, a huge amount of users uh, in business processes that are done thousands of times a day, millions of times a year. So one of our very first customers was uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota um, in their call center. Um, so they had uh, about 300 customer service reps um, that were navigating between around 25 SAP screens and then four or five uh, mainframe screens. And it was taking them about 10 or 12 minutes to uh, handle a single customer call because they had to jump through so many screens and, and two different systems. And what they were looking for was a single pane of glass that would allow their customer service team to come to one place um, and unify all of their data and functionality um, into one simple web screen so that they could get their customers off the phone quicker. Um, so we were able to bring in uh, our clear work product, uh, put it on top of that business process, and then use our integration hub to connect to SAP and to their mainframe system to, to bring that true single pane of glass. And their call handling time went from a little over 10 minutes down to about two minutes. Um, and then their training class for that process went from about two weeks to four hours. So it's pretty incredible what intelligent process automation can do at scale. Um, but you really need to, uh, in our particular space, focus on the humans and how, how do we make the people faster at their jobs by giving them accelerators and, and you know, little buttons that they can click and little automations that take the uh, mundanity out of their daily jobs. Yeah, and working in a call center is a hard, hard job. And in so many instances, I, I think that I'm thinking of my own experiences with call centers. You know, I'm not calling because I just need to chat with somebody. I'm calling because something isn't working. I'm frustrated. I need help. You know, I mean, you're throwing a lifeline when you call a call center. So and and you I think as a customer, you sort of, you know, gird yourself to actually make that call because, you know, generally speaking, that it's not going to be an easy or quick process. So when you, when I hear you can take a process that's 10 to 12 minutes down to two, oh my gosh, I think about how many happy customers. And I think also about how many happy call center employees who are literally your, every business's front line and we can make their jobs so much less stressful, so much happier, you know, so much more productive. I think that's just such a major win, you know, and then, and then you go to the you know, then you go to the cost efficiencies for um, an organization. And of course, there are, you know, there are money saving things that are happening as a result of that. But when you can make customers happy and you can make your employees happy and you can add, you know, the efficiencies and the cost savings on it, it's kind of like this is a massive no brainer, you know, I mean, at least it is to me. So yeah. what about give us another I like I love putting people on the spot. Give me another example of uh, a use case that might be interesting. So one of my favorites is uh, Rush Enterprises. They're the largest trucking dealer uh, within the United States. So they own all the Peterbilt dealerships um, throughout the U.S. They've got about 200 retail locations. And um, we initially came in to automate procure to pay for them. So 
um, we provided a, a single business process layer uh, within a web browser that allowed them to um, go out and shop online at their different vendor shopping sites um, for office supplies, even direct materials within their, their retail branches and have those shopping cart contents automatically imported from these e-commerce sites directly into their, their ERP system. Um, so it essentially eliminated all data entry completely. I, you know, say I'm an office employee and I need to order a printer, some paper and some toner. Um, I can go onto Amazon, uh, shop the way I would normally shop on Amazon and click checkout. And at that point, uh, our automation platform takes over and applies your business rules against your shopping cart contents and feeds it into your financial system of record automatically. So that entire process used to involve somebody um, not only completing that shopping activity, but then going in and manually typing that data into their system of record, um, sometimes correctly, most of the time not correctly. Uh, and you know, you'd get a call from uh, an, an AP recon clerk three days later saying, hey, you know, we got this invoice from Amazon. It doesn't match what we have in SAP or in Oracle or in PeopleSoft. Uh, what gives? Um, so, you know, we were able to completely eliminate the AP recon process for that customer. Um, and it ended up, uh, you know, translating into tens of millions of dollars a year in OPEX savings, um, in addition to a no number of other benefits. That's awesome. As the person who is genuinely generally charged with chasing down rogue invoices. I don't know that there's a more hated task. So that is a very exciting thing to hear about. That's really cool. So John, what's ahead? Where do you see intelligent automation moving forward? What can we expect in the next year? I, I really, I always hate to speculate beyond, you know, the next year, maybe two years, because I think that things change so rapidly. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but what do you see ahead? I'd love to hear that. I think you're definitely going to see um, the two different schools of thought within intelligent automation converging together. So on the RPA side, um, you can already see some of the big RPA players talking about large scale end to end business transformation and how do we get a bot in the hands of every user within the organization. And really the, the way you do that is you move upstream, you move to front office business processes. Um, so you'll start to see a lot of the RPA vendors uh, start to build out business process management capabilities. Um, on the other side of the fence, for folks like us and the Pegas and Appians of the world, um, we're already there and we tend to be moving backwards towards RPA. So it's interesting that, uh, you know, you'll see both sides of the fence move towards the middle. Um, you know, we've always been focused on front office automation and now we want to move to back office automation. So, um, you know, whoever, whoever gets that middle ground first and has the the front office and back office capabilities is going to is going to win and you know obviously there's there's you know more than one party that's that's successful in any given market so i think we'll see a handful of uh, firms that uh, do both front office and back office automation very well um, and then some who you know may slowly fade away yeah, I think that that's, you know, kind of common in this technology space uh, in general. And um, it is interesting to watch all the players in this space. And, um, you know, I don't I, I hear the sort of the marketing message, you know, a robot for every person on a regular basis. And I think that that's a confusing sometimes that can be a confusing message. Um, I think really what we want to focus on, what I'm interested in focusing on as a business leader is more about how can I use automation solutions, RPA and intelligent automation to drive significant business value. I don't care about a robot for every person. I care about how am I going to do this to drive significant business value? And I think that, you know, what you and the team at Clear have proven is that you're able to do this in some pretty impressive ways. So I really appreciate you hanging out with me t today, John. Yeah, it's been Thanks for having me. Oh, awesome. So I want to remind you to look for our report, How Intelligent Process Automation Can Change Everything About Your Business Journey, and to be sure and check out John and Clear Software if you've got some business processes that you think could be fine-tuned, and uh, we'll see you again. All right. Thanks, Shelly.